Hello, everyone. I'm Warden Darren White from Dufferin County. I'm joined today by Lisa Post, Counselor for the Town of Orangeville, also a uh, organizer for Celebrate Your Awesome and involved in many Pride events so locally and uh, around the area. I'm joined by Jim Waddington as well, who is a, um, a LGBTQ advocate uh, in the community, a fantastic photographer, and uh, just generally gentleman about town. And <laughs> Peter Sorelli, who is the owner of Rainbow Ridge, uh, just out on Highway 109, uh, just outside of Orange Hill, which is a, uh, a campground in the area. So welcome, everybody. Good morning. Thank you Thank for you. joining us today. And let's talk about inclusion, diversity, equity, uh, that kind of thing. So let's start um, by talking about this, and, and everybody give me your opinion on this. Uh, Celebrate Your Awesome was just held virtually for the first time ever. Um, it was a, a large success from all indications. It went really well. Not as good as it could have been with everybody together, obviously, um, but uh, adapting to the current change. So thoughts thoughts on how it went, thoughts on the reception uh, in the uh, in the climate of COVID and in the climate, in the general climate uh, we're in. Uh, Lisa, why don't you start? Sure. So um, we definitely missed having everybody in person at Celebrate Your Awesome this year. I was really missing being on Mill Street and giving everybody a good old hug. But uh, it was really fabulous that everybody was able to come together um, virtually and celebrate and had a party. So we got great submissions from all over Dufferin County from some great local entertainers and some people in the community just sharing messages of love and of acceptance and of positivity. Um, it looks like the reception was really great. We had um, a couple of thousand people join us for our virtual dance party even though we kept losing the connection with some Facebook issues but uh, it was fabulous everybody was up dancing in their living rooms we got some great video and some photos of people celebrating with their families with their loved ones um, and just celebrating everything that made them awesome so I think everybody came together really well and despite COVID uh, made sure that the messages of love and positivity and inclusion were still being spread far and wide through Dufferin County. Sure Jim? Thoughts? I think also, uh, first of all, of course, kudos to those that are socially and uh, technically inclined. Uh, most of our committee were more into the uh, the behind the scenes, uh, i.e. gathering information, gathering uh, support, people, uh, sending out emails of, would you play, would you perform, would you send a message, an inspirational message. We had nothing but uh, we had absolutely we were embraced by the entire Dufferin community, and I will say we actually expanded that this year. Being virtual, uh, we had uh, a submission of a drag queen from England. Uh, we also had other people from uh, certainly in the Toronto area. Uh, we had a large support from our um, we'll call it our go-to drag uh, group, which was of course Troy Boy Entertainment. Uh, that's my drag. And I know that uh, Dufferin just embraces uh, that, that particular organization. They're absolutely stellar. Uh, they've been wonderful supporters. And they took time. I mean, usually they are paid for these things. And uh, it was wonderful to see that everyone just basically gave of themselves. All of our performers just submitted and were quite gracious about providing entertainment. Uh, and I also, even our facility that was used, uh, you know, everybody was very, very, very open uh, and very accepting. So, yes, I think the event was absolutely wonderful uh, based on, of course, our present circumstances. Uh, I think we did the best that we possibly could. And I think so, the, the community also did the best that they could. They embraced it and supported it. And I think everyone had a good time. Great. Peter, do you have thoughts on how uh, you feel Pride Month went, Pride or celebrate your awesome virtually? Or um, I believe it was. It's very important, and it's celebrate your awesome is very crucial to a small town or rural communities. It's a great outlet, and you can see the positive um, actions that have happened from Celebrate Your Awesome. I've grown up in this area my entire life, and I wish something like this had happened years ago. You can tell that whether it's virtual or the actual event on Mill Street, it brings a lot of light and a lot of education to people who just don't understand. So it's very good. Rainbow Ridge will always support Celebrate Your Awesome and anything that Dufferin County has to offer. Excellent. 
Well, I was the uh, I was honored to be the first warden, warden in Dufferin County to ever raise a pride flag this year. Um, it's something I took very seriously to do, uh, and I was glad Lisa came out to join me doing that. Um, and it's, I think it's a sign of changing times locally in the area for sure. But what uh, I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, most municipalities don't just automatically raise flags for whatever months. There usually needs to be some kind of formal request because most places have a protocol. Um, so it, it, it struck, struck me sort of along the lines of the uh, Pan-African flag back in February that why haven't we done this before uh, rather than the why or should we be doing this? Uh, I wondered why it took till 2020 to get here. So thoughts on generally on the community and how we're evolving, not only in COVID, but over the last number of years uh, with regards to acceptance and inclusion of um, you know, just marginalized people in general. Uh, what do you What do you think about that, Jim? Well, I think really that uh, Dufferin County is uh, on an upswing, if you will. I, I don't I don't look at the unfortunate scenarios or the negativity. I think since Celebrate Your Awesome, uh, this this community, this this county has come to life. They've, uh, they've realized that there is a, uh, a large population of, uh, you know, of the uh, 2S LGBTQ community. I wish somebody would come up with a name for that. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I think the, the, the learning and the education and the awareness is growing. I think everyone is embracing that. I think anyone moving into the 21st century realizes that this is something that uh, we need to embrace. Uh, we need to we need to move it forward. We need it to become part of the norm as opposed to the exception. Similar to other minority groups or, or, or um, you know people of color or religion or, or anything like that. I mean our, our community uh, certainly Dufferin has has opened its arms to so many other uh, groups, uh, and I think that's what makes Dufferin so special. Is that since certainly since Celebrate Your Awesome, and again, you know, like social media, for example, just blows the world away right now. I mean, thank goodness we've had it during this COVID. I'm not sure what we'd be doing without it. Uh, you know, but but that to me has expediated a lot of what used to be. You know, it was so so much more difficult back then to to you know decades ago to to interact and to communicate. Whereas now, there is no excuse. We're all here. We're all together, uh, you know. Hopefully, as one, and um, and we're moving forward. So, yeah, I, I think that Dufferin County is doing a wonderful job, uh, and there are a lot of other areas that have stemmed out or have branched out, I should say, from Celebrate Your Awesome. You know, again, because of that awareness. Well, yeah. And now there's this group that started, and that group that started. You know, you look at DCAP, for example, and they have the Glow Group, which has been around before Celebrate Your Awesome, but it's been brought to the forefront. You know, there's been a more of a more of an acceptance, more of an awareness for people. So, yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. kind of my point. Sure. So, Lisa, thoughts on on inclusion in the community, just how things have evolved. You've been a resident for a while. What do you, what are your thoughts? Uh, working with Celebrate Your Awesome, I think one of the things that we've learned as a committee is that most of the ignorance that we see in the community comes from lack of education, which is why Celebrate Your Awesome has been so focused on making sure that educational resources were there and that people can feel comfortable to come and learn more um, in order to be more accepting and more inclusive. Um, a lot of it comes from ignorance and lack of education. So. I think Dufferin County has come such a long way and to see you raising the pride flag um, and to get unanimous support from County Council when we came in and asked for that to happen was a huge step. Five years ago, 10 years ago, that may not have been the case. And through Celebrate Your Awesome, what we found is that most of the most of the ignorant comments that we've seen, which really haven't been very many, have been flooded by positive comments and drowned out. Um, which is exactly what we want to see. That, more than anything else, shows people in minority groups and people who are lacking that feeling of inclusion that there is a positive, safe community around them 
that as soon as any negativity is happening, they're jumping on board and drowning it in positivity. Um, last year, a lot of the Pride events that were held throughout the province of Ontario were met with people protesting and and some negativity and celebrate your awesome was the only one that wasn't we were prepared for it as we are every year we're always aware that those things could happen but we've been very fortunate that in Dufferin County we've never seen those negative protests happening during our in-person event we've seen some negativity but it's always been a very positive day a very positive event and again, that education piece is so crucial that we focus really highly on making sure that people are understanding and educated. Thanks. Peter, your clients come at the campground, come from all over Ontario, I guess, and, and different areas. So it gives an opportunity for people to see Dufferin County. What's, what's the general thought of, of where Dufferin County is and where it's going? And I guess you have some long-term clients as well who have I do. So our, yeah, a lot of our clients here, customers, uh, seasonals or returning seasonals, they really support, especially the little town of Grand Valley because it's five kilometers away from us. Um, they have noticed very little negativity towards them as the years progress. And I, I can honestly say that to celebrate your awesome has happened. Um, the communities like Hillsburg, Orangeville, Grand Valley, even Fergus have really, really changed for the better. We don't have much negativity. We don't, when we go into town, people don't look at us like, oh my God, there they are or anything. They actually cater to us. And I believe that's our community growing and accepting the LGBT community. And I, I believe that Celebrate Your Awesome has really educated people in the past few years on that it's just the way we are and that we're just like everyone else. So I we don't really experience negativity from the community at all here. Um, and we're very thankful for that. Well, I'm, I'm really encouraged to hear that. You know, uh, you know, one of the big issues I have the last couple of weeks you know, sudden, in a pandemic, trying to recover from that, and then you have issues around race, and you have issues around the LGBTQ community uh, locally, and it, it's uh, it's really uh, forced a lot of people to take a sober second look at a lot of things. I think. And I think you're right; a lot of people are changing, and uh, but one of the challenges I have is that uh, uh, you know when people uh, sort of overcompensate for what, you know, their, their lack of knowledge on, on something or, or whatever. And they, uh, you know, entrench themselves further in outdated beliefs. Um, you know, I've been trying to work sort of behind the scenes to change some of that uh, through uh, motions at County Council for a diversity task force, which is coming this week. I know Orangeville is doing a similar one in town. I know Shelburne has a a task force starting up. Uh, I know internally our organizations have those things as well. And I think the next step might be some kind of a community based uh, task force for diversion and, and equity and whatnot. Um, so, and I think we, we, we know where some of the recent controversy has come from. So let's touch upon that for uh, briefly so we can, you know, get it out in the open and, and clear the air a little bit. Jim, you've been pretty vocal on the subject. <laughs> what's, your, really? what's your thoughts? <laughs> really? Really? Well, well, I will say, uh, and, and very briefly, really, because I think this, this, uh, this particular Zoom meeting uh, needs to be uh, a little bit of education, but also to say, you know what, Dufferin, you're doing a hell of a good job. You know, uh, we're moving forward. We have a lot of positivity behind us. And if you're not on board, well, in this day and age, you're the minority and you're not accepted and you're the one that'll be left behind. So unfortunately, even with our businesses, you know, our downtown communities, they are supporting this and they are moving us forward. They are, they are embracing it. it, it, it they are inclusive. And I, we, have, we have stores in town that actually I saw a sign that said, no this, no racism, no not not accepted, don't come in. I thought it was awesome. 
you know that's just yeah. one person's approach now a few months ago that may not have been the case uh but right now we are in a bit of a dilemma uh you know if if particularly in this case and i know the one we're talking about uh you know if we were in a position where this was my grandmother uh you know we might, ha might have a conversation and say you know grandma we don't really talk like that anymore and uh we also have moved you know a little further and perhaps you'd like to try and you know use these a little more appropriate words or or act a little bit differently uh but it's your grandmother and it's in your house and it's it's a it's a family thing where as if you are when you're in a uh when you're in a a, a public uh position uh and a person of leadership and a person uh who is supposed to represent their community and their county and we have had these specific words that have been um you know very clearly entrenched uh the words speak for themselves and that they're not acceptable and yes unfortunately uh you know um Warden, uh, you know, Warden White, I, I, I really, I really want to uh, give you uh, kudos for your uh, strength and your courage uh, a few weeks ago, and your um, directness that this is not acceptable. We're not waiting. We're going to do this immediately. And and I think the the entire Dufferin County stood up and cheered you at that point. Because that was a that to me again was another stumbling block that was overcome, and even still the person would not accept the responsibility, and therefore the person is now left behind. In this case, uh, with a petition of over 17,000 people, uh, I'm getting this morning. I spoke to a police officer actually in Toronto who had just written a very long email. And it's on the Pride Orangeville Facebook page. Well, I read that last night. And he made it very clear, you know. And I thought it was very to the point. And I think um, the only solution at this point is we do hope that the person resigns, uh, steps down, and if not, then I certainly hope that their their members of uh, council uh, do something. And I know that the integrity commissioner has been overwhelmed. Uh, with emails and phone calls, it's just not right. <clears throat> and I think it puts a, a puts a black mark on Dufferin County, of which we can erase. Yeah, well, I, I don't disagree. I, I mean, I didn't. I, I've received an awful lot of support uh, from the public, from staff at the county, from um, you know everywhere, from priests and firefighters and all across the country. I was a little surprised that actually at some of the, uh, you know, but I, I've received a bit of hate mail too. And, and that's fair and I can understand some people are just not willing to change their position. Um, and, but I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't do it for the, the kudos or anything. I did it because it was the right thing to do. I did it because I, I've evolved like I expect or hope that other people will be more involved. Really, you know, I, I did it for a couple of specific reasons, and one of them is I have five grandkids, and uh, and the other one is I work with kids uh, through the cadet program, and I want I, I don't I don't want them to grow up in a world thinking that they can't be who they are supposed to be or who they want to be, uh, whether that's my grandkids or whether that's any of my cadets, and um, I think it's important for people who have the a platform to be positive influence for those who uh, may have whatever challenge uh, in front of them, whether it's a racial challenge or LGBTQ challenge or, or what, uh, to know that there are people that they can go to and, and, and respond to. And, and um, I did it a lot because of that. I thought of my friends, I thought of my grandkids, I thought of my, my friends in the, in the LGBTQ community uh, who are, were hurt by the comments and yeah, so that's sort of why I did it. Lisa, your thoughts on, on um, and, and 
to, to jump on some of what Jim has said too, I think one of the things that Celebrate Your Awesome has really prided itself on trying to do is making sure that people in the LGBTQ community know that Dufferin County is a safe place for them, that they can be loved and accepted, that the youth who are struggling to come out know that there's a positive place that they can stay. They don't need to leave. They don't need to go to Toronto to feel comfortable. They can stay within their homes and be comfortable. And when hurtful comments like were made by Mr. Curry were made, that undoes a lot of that work. It takes away some of that education, some of that safe feeling. So, um, I, th I think one of the positive things that have come out of it, if you're looking for silver linings, which I often try and do, is that a lot of people now um, have seen that those comments are not acceptable. They're challenging their Uncle Bob or their grandmas or they're, they're having those tough conversations with the people in their family where it's generally been, oh, well, that's just how Aunt Susan thinks. Well, that's not okay anymore. So now people are challenging and standing up to make sure that everybody in their community can feel safe. And they want to be the voice for the people who feel like they're voiceless sometimes. And I think that's been one of the really positive pieces. And Celebrate Your Awesome and the LGBTQ community have really come together to, again, drown out that negativity and some positive messaging and to really overtly state, state that this is a positive, safe place and you can feel safe here. You can be yourself and we're accepting you, whoever you are. Um, so I think there's been some positivity that has come out of it. I think that those mess those conversations needed to happen and they have been happening. So the important piece right now is that we need to keep those conversations happening. We need to keep telling our youth that they can be who they are. Like you said, Darren, the cadet program is, is one place where we see youth that sometimes are struggling with who they are and, and being accepted and being different. And um, when they can see the, the leaders in their community are stepping up to protect them and to make sure that they can be who they are, that's a very positive piece. I've had to have a few of those conversations with people I know about you know, we don't talk like that anymore, and here's why. And that and they're never um, easy conversations, but they're certainly there to be had. I mean, I, I think I made mm -hmm. the statement uh, towards the end of my prepared remarks, if I'm not uh, mistaken. I basically said, I, I don't have any more room for hate and intolerance and segregation anymore. I just don't. I, I'm so sick and tired of it. I just would rather we all just move together and, and be one, one human race. And, and uh, while that may be a little bit pie in the sky, I mean, you know, we gotta gotta have a goal, I guess. You know, um, uh, I, one of, one of the things I worry about though is is as much as we're trying to move these issues forward, you know, uh, some people who are trying to, I, I honestly think, trying to move the issues forward are maybe hurting them a little bit by making comments that are so the other side that they're damaging and then they just entrench people who are immovable already. Uh, you know, one of our other local politicians, I'm not going to mention any names, uh, I recently basically said Dufferin is full of hillbillies and hicks and thankfully they're dying out. Uh, you know, which all that's going to do is make an entire segment of the community further entrenched in their beliefs. So those comments like that are just not helpful and uh, people need to really stop and think about what they say before they say it. Uh, Peter, uh, what are your thoughts on sort of... Sorry, Darren, I would, say, I would say that those people are the exception and not the rule. I, I do agree. Um, but when they're, again, Sorry, when Peter? they're in a position of power, uh, those comments get a lot of play, you know? Right. So, uh, Peter, your thoughts on uh, where, you, where you hope to see us moving forward in the next uh, coming years uh, with regards to businesses like yours, other businesses um, run by members of the LGBTQ community locally, um, what do you see happening? Do you see it being easier, more difficult? I see with the fact the that Celebrate Your Awesome is encouraging people. I know that Rainbow Ridge is one of the longest gay owned businesses in Dufferin County. And we hope to see more, more and more people are moving from the city to Dufferin County because it is a safe place. There's wonderful communities all over Dufferin County. I have seasonals here that live in Grand Valley, which is five kilometers away from me, but they still have a spot here at Rainbow Ridge just because of Dufferin County. Grand Valley has been great. I hope to see more people come out, whoever you are, gay, straight, bi, whatever. 
um, come and, 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 and just make Dufferin County better, better than what it is. It's uh, negative comments towards businesses that are owned by gay individuals and that are not acceptable this day and age. We're not going backwards, we're going forwards. And uh, we, it's, it has to be more inclusive. And I believe we're moving very quickly in that direction, especially this recent event. It's even making more people aware of what's going on, how comments like that are not acceptable anymore. It's now time to come together, especially during a time like this. Sure. I really envy your live action background, by the way. I'm a big camper myself. I just can't, actually just came back from camping uh, last night. I got <laughs> and, I uh, can see. Look at that water. Now, you, now you're just making me uh, envious. So. <laughs> Darren, I invite you to take a tour. I'm, I'm willing to bring you over to the Rainbow Ridge to have an experience just to drive around and see the 72 acres of... Uh, Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous uh, scenery, and uh, certainly very an inviting space. I'd love to do that. I'm, I'm, uh, I've driven by it a many, many times, and I've never been there, so I'd love to go by one day and, and take. Well, it. everyone is always yeah. welcome. For Excellent. It. So, uh, as we close, final thoughts on uh, just uh, the community in general, where you want to see us going, how you think we should get there. Lisa, you're in a position of leadership in the community. Uh, what do you think some next steps uh, should be? I'm really excited to see what comes out of the diversity and inclusion committees, both in Dufferin County and Orangeville, maybe a joint one. Um, I think that we've got a lot of work to do, but I think we've come a long way. So I'm really excited of where we're going to go. Um, I've had some conversations with some staff members at the county and at Orangeville who are very pleased with some of the directions that have already been taken um, by non-government entities um, and that we can carry those over. Um, our community is an inclusive community and the more that we can continue to have these positive conversations. So I thank you for hosting this today because I think these, these conversations are authentic and important um, and I look forward to having more of them in the future and keeping this dialogue going. Excellent. Jim, closing well, thoughts? I, uh, I'd like to, first of all, of course, thank you, Darren. I appreciate this opportunity. I hope that we have many more of them. Again, on a positive note, uh, to again, educate and to inform people. Uh, and of course, if anyone has questions, we encourage uh, them to, to submit those questions. Or if anyone would like to have a conversation in person, that's fine too. Uh, you know, uh, the Rainbow Ridge, as I say, I've been going there for a decade or more, and it's absolutely spectacular, right? We have a gem. We have a, a gorgeous gem right in our backyard, which, again, the majority of uh, people before Celebrate Your Awesome were not even aware of. Um, I would like to note that I'm wearing a pin today, and it's a uh, rainbow flag pin. It says pride on it, and I would like to thank the federal minister for sending those to us. Uh, all of the levels of government have been very supportive. Uh, Kyle Seebach, uh, you know, Sylvia Jones, certainly yourself, and mayors across Dufferin. So there is strength in number. And uh, in this case, as I say, uh, it's a very positive move forward. I actually would like to thank that person uh, for bringing this attention even stronger to the table and to uh, provide us with an example of what to use. Uh, to go um, to, to move forward and to and to talk in a much more appropriate, positive, and an inclusive way. Um, my last note is we're still in COVID, so stay safe, stay supported, wear your mask, and hope to uh, give everybody a hug soon. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, yeah, you're right. I mean that that kind of attention, negative attention. Kind of a bit of a double-edged sword as much as it hurts it also gets a message out right. and gives avenues that may not have otherwise been available uh so been a lot of the media attention to dufferin county in the last few weeks there certainly has and not a lot of it good which is unfortunate well i i, I also can say that it's been a very learning curve for a lot of people and it's it has brought a lot of attention to dufferin and i i see it as 
we have to see it as uh, something that we take uh, take out of this uh, that's positive. Yeah, I, I think uh, the good thing about it, part of the good thing media-wise will be that uh, the public will be able to see the pushback against those kind of comments and uh, realize that maybe we're a little bit more open than they thought originally we might be. And how so, we move uh, forward. I think we lost Peter. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think he went exactly. for him. I think we lost Peter, yeah, um, with the uh, internet the way it is in Dufferin County. <laughs> Peter's gone, <laughs> but uh, we'll, I'll thank him, thank him for joining us today anyway, and we'll, uh, we'll make some time and uh, take a, a spin down to Rainbow Ridge and take a look and uh, meet some people, shake some hands and whatnot, uh, when we're allowed to do so, of course, and <laughs> we'll go from there. So thank you both for joining me, and uh, I hope you have a uh, rest, uh, great uh, rest of the day, which looks to be another uh, sweaty steamer day. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.